What's up buddies, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and we all know the Canon R5 is somewhere on that horizon and the specs look impressive but I'm still a skeptic and here's why. Let's just take a look at the confirmed video specs that we know of. At first, Canon came out by saying it's going to be capable of shooting 8K video. And at that point, everyone went, oh, here we go again, Canon promising more than they can deliver. And it was assumed that it would be 8K with a massive crop or at 15 frames a second and certainly without autofocus. Then, of course, Canon responded by announcing that, in fact, it would shoot 30 frames per second with no crop and it would have autofocus. And for some reason, for some people, this was enough for them to proclaim that the R5 would blow everything else out of the water and Sony are dead or Panasonic is dead now. And just to preface this video, I'm not a Sony or Panasonic or Canon fanboy, I'm just a camera fanboy in general, just before you comment. The fact of the matter is, until the R5 has been released and it's in people's hands who are able to test it, we just don't know. So let's, before we start getting too high on this camera, let's take a little reality check and just read between the lines a bit. The first thing to address is the projected price of the Canon R5. Some sites are saying two and a half thousand dollars, which I don't believe for a second. Other sites are saying three and a half thousand dollars, which I, I would say is more likely. And I've seen other crazy rumors that are saying between four and six thousand, which I, I don't know if I believe that, but if, if that's the case, it will put it firmly in the same price bracket as the Canon C200. Which, of course, the C200 doesn't shoot 8K, but it does shoot superb 4K, and plus you get built-in ND filters, audio inputs, and a host of superb codecs. And that brings me on to our next subject, codecs. Of which there's been no mention, and I'm just hoping Canon choose a really good, efficient codec like XAVC, and not the stupidest codec, Motion JPEG, which they used in the Canon 1DX Mark II, and the 5D Mark IV when shooting 4K. Motion JPEG gives you huge file sizes to the point of it not being viable option, with no added benefit, so why did Canon choose it before? Well, because it takes relatively little processing power, so just imagine what happens when we're dealing with 8K video. Using the super efficient XAVC codec, Sony's A7S II gives us 4K at 100 megabits per second. So in theory, the R5 could have 8K at 400 megabits per second, as it's four times the resolution. This would give us large but manageable file sizes, but can you see this happening? Think of all the processing power needed to compress all of that data. Speaking of file sizes, if Canon do make the huge mistake of choosing MJPEG as the codec, given that the 5D Mark IV's 4K footage was at 500 megabits per second, logic dictates that the R5's 8K would be somewhere around 2000 megabits per second. And just to put that in perspective, that's 250 megabytes per second. So a 64 gig card gives you just over four minutes worth of footage. So I'd say that Canon have to be doing some sort of compression for their 8K footage for it to be accessible to the masses. But the biggest problem with this is the heat produced in the process. So I question whether a regular EOS R 5D or 1D style housing will be enough for this camera without it overheating. I mean, just look at the kind of cameras that can shoot 8K. Cinema and broadcast cameras that have huge bodies, huge housing for lots of processing power, ventilation and cooling. Something else that has me wondering is the state of the rolling shutter in the R5. I mean, it's really common to see horrendous rolling shutter from the high resolution modes in some cameras. I mean, a prime example is the EOS R. It's great in HD, really fast, no problems, but when you put it into 4K, no, no, not so good. So what's 8K gonna be like? The last thing we're yet to find out is the sensor size, and therefore, we don't know whether the 8K will be a full sensor readout, i.e. the exact amount of pixels needed to film 8K video. And this also means if there are any lower resolution modes, like 4K or even 6K, we don't know if they'll be downscaled or whether Canon will resort to any kind of pixel binning or line skipping. Of course, those last two, not very desirable. There's so much we don't know about the R5, but there's one thing I want to stress. I really want this to be amazing, and I'm rooting for Canon, because 
they need it to be. So my fingers are crossed that Canon can address all of the aforementioned pitfalls and the much hyped 8K video won't come with a stupid codec, unmanageable file sizes, line skipping, pixel binning, rolling shutter and overheating problems. You know, personally, I'm looking forward more to the R6 because personally, I only need 4K video and the price should be way more friendly, making it more of the people. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this especially geeky video. Please let me know in the comments section what you think the R5 will end up being. Do you think it will be as advertised? Or do you think corners will be cut? Or do you think it'll be just somewhere in the middle? Let me know. I've got a large back catalog of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.